right, guys. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a trade breakdown on the Forever model and showing you guys how I made $2,600 on a NASDAQ long position. So like always, you guys already know this. We start off with a blank chart and we have NASDAQ on the left and S&P 500 on the right. And before I show my annotations, I want you to mark off yours just to know that you guys have an understanding of what we look for in step one and two of our entry model checklist. So if you got that right, we have price retracing into a daily internal range liquidity pool, and we are creating S&P divergence inside of that internal range liquidity pool. And you guys also might be wondering next, are you going to be trading the S&P or are you gonna be trading the NASDAQ? I should be trading the S&P, but I like trading the NASDAQ over the S&P 500 in indices because I like the way that NASDAQ delivers price more than the S&P due to collective data that I've received in the past. So on this trade position, I prioritize the NASDAQ, but you guys will see that in the upcoming slides. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing time frame alignment with daily one hour and the M5. And I'm doing this and entering on a short term perspective because it is the end of quarter two and it is also the last week of the month of quarter two which is June. So we're looking at the hourly chart off of that daily internal range liquidity pool. And you can see the SMT divergence that we have and the market is already tipping its hand to us, showing us a run on the lows on NASDAQ and a higher low on the S&P. And we have a shift in structure with an imbalance that we can use as a higher time frame key level. So if we're going to be executing on the M5 chart, we can use that hourly bullish fair value gap as a higher time frame key level and then frame an M5 market maker buy model off of that hourly fair value gap. So it would be the same process as using a daily key level and framing a one hour market maker buy model, but I'm just using an intermediate term perspective and making a market maker model on a short term perspective. Now, inside of that intermediate term perspective key level, we need to get SMT divergence. So I had the Dow, the Dow Jones opened up to the right, and you could see on the hourly standpoint, we made the lower low on the Dow, and we made the higher low on the NASDAQ, but also the higher low on the S&P 500. So we have, again, now step one and two checked off of our list. Higher time frame key level tag, which is going to be the hourly fair value gap, and SMT divergence occurring in that hourly fair value gap. So what we do next is we drop down to our next aligned time frame, the M5 chart, and we are waiting for after equities open for us to then look for a entry point because 930 at equities open provides a volatility and injection into the marketplace, either a Judas swing lower manipulating price, clearing some buy stops because you can see these are just relative lows on the NASDAQ and the S&P. So I'm assuming when price was happening live that we were going to get an accumulation, manipulation lower, digging deeper into that hourly fair value gap and then distribution higher. So that was my anticipation before equities open. And then what you'll see next is as anticipated, price dropped at 930 open. So now what we do is we wait. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for a change in state of delivery off of that hourly bullish for value gap on the M5 chart so we could frame our market maker buy model. Now, as simple as I just said it, we got on the next candle at 940, a closure above that down close candle that created the S&T and also ran the short term lows. So now that we have the change in state of delivery, all we need to do is wait for price to come back and tap that order block because that will then be our entry point. And all we need to do here, since we're fractalizing the model, we're just looking to get a piece of the pie. We're not trying to catch the whole move because, because again, it's the end of the quarter, it's the last week of the month. So I just want to catch intraday trades which is why I'm using the hourly as a higher time frame key level and an M5 market maker buy model on this exact trade. Another thing to also understand is that we had 10 a.m. high impact news. And now that we have had 9.30 open, have us give manipulation on price 
and now we have a 10 a.m. news driver 30 minutes later, what my anticipation would be is 9.30 manipulates and 10 and 10 o'clock it distributes higher and before we get our news release you can see price comes down it taps that order block that sensitive area in price and then we have our entry point that's our limit trigger all we need to do now is just set our alerts at our stop loss and set our alert at our tp and then just leave the charts and let the trade run and as simple as it was based off of how i explained it this is how i fractalize the model Literally, the second that we tag the order block, that high probability one that created the SMT, ran short-term lows, stayed inside of that hourly bullish for value gap, 10 a.m. news was the volatility injection to give us speed to take out that one to two risk to reward, the only piece of that trade that we needed to capitalize on in the marketplace. Now, if you have an understanding and still can use a reference as a daily, weekly, or monthly key level, you could literally do this on all time frames if you have that higher time frame key level reference like i still had a daily bullish for value gap but i was able to bring it down all the way to a five minute chart and still get an entry and not have to just trade on the hourly chart because i'm not looking for long-term swings when i'm anticipating the closure of the monthly candle and then opening for july to be a potential power of three move given the fact that we have the start of quarter three, and then as well as NFP delivering on the first Friday of the month. So with that in mind, I want to look for trades to get myself in and out of the market same day. And with this strategy is exactly how you can do that, which will definitely provide you with a higher amount or a high frequency amount of trades that you could be taking in that week. So if this is your cup of tea and you wanna look for more trades, you wanna get into the market more frequently, you can use an intermediate term perspective like a four hour key level and then an M15 market maker model or an hourly key level and an M5 market maker model. It's the same sort of process as long as you're in retrospect to higher time frame order flow and you are using or referencing some sort of monthly, weekly, or daily key level as a narrative base behind your lower time frame entry. And you can see here, this is my execution with the tap of the order block and then my closure of my position at a one to two, which is my partial. And then I readjusted my stop loss position to these lows, which is where we got stopped out finalizing here. And my total PL at 2,665. And that is the full trade and what I took on the NASDAQ and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something understanding that you can fractalize this model and price is fractal overall in general but if you have any questions at all drop it in the comments below and I will see you guys next week in the next upload